Our Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful for the privilege of being here, being able to study your word in a unique way, which we hope will only get better and better as we uh, have time to work with it and practice with it and so forth. Uh, we ask that God the Holy Spirit might indeed be our teacher because after all, it is not a machine. Uh, it is not uh, all of the equipment uh, that the uh, modern day affords. It is still God with a gifted man to his congregation. And so we ask, Lord, that you will enable us to utilize this in a, a modern age to communicate the gospel. That's what it's all about. I pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. We're in Philippians chapter 4, and this is going to be uh, part one of a series we're going to entitle The Christian Virtue of Kindness. All of you know that I have said before, when I first came into the grace movement, I found that uh, we knew a lot about dispensationalism. We knew that we didn't baptize and why. We even argued about where the church started and so forth. But when it came down to the things of the Christian way of life, very few people knew and understood that there was something additional, something more than just fighting those who baptized and started the church in Acts 2 or were covenant theologians. And that, of course, is having the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, recently, um, as uh, you know again, we have had um, some conversations with, um, with Dave Wilson. Now, he actually sort of got on a kick, an obsession with this business of having the mind of Christ and the virtues of Christ and, and so forth. And we, we um, argued with him, but what he was saying was true in that this is something that we need. Uh, the thing that I was arguing about was that it was something separate as far as doctrine was concerned, that any virtue of Jesus Christ is a doctrine to be learned, uh, studied and learned, and then applied to our everyday lives. And so um, I thought that uh, perhaps that's something that uh, we should do, because a lot of folks are confused as to just how they should be. And again, we're not talking about doing something. We're talking about being a certain way. God does everything in accordance with his own nature and how he is, so that it, nothing that he does is hypocritical. And the Lord Jesus Christ was the, the same way. He learned how to be a certain way. And so what we're going to talk about is uh, behavior altering. Because the Christian way of life, in actuality, is just that. We get saved and, and so forth, but following that, it is learning doctrine. Part of the doctrines that we learn are to alter our lives, our way of thinking, our way of doing, because of what we are. So we're going to uh, start on uh, this matter of part of the Christian way of life. Now, in uh, the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse number 8, the Apostle Paul says a few things, and they are grand things. And as a matter of fact, uh, with some of you, I, I know that um, many of you, Philippians is your favorite uh, book, and uh, uh, this particular verse is a life's verse. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, that's what we're going to talk about, and then we're going to get on into the virtue of kindness, and there be any praise, think on these things. Now we're going to find out what uh, these particular things are by zeroing first of, of all on a definition of the word virtue. Now, virtue is the Greek word aretes. And aretes is, a, is a, an important word throughout the scripture. But when you get down to a Bible definition of it, now we're taking it out of the secular and using it as the Bible writers used it. Aretes means a character strength. Now, we've all uh, gone through uh, President Clinton and, uh, and uh, his, um, 
twisting the truth and, and his uh, supposed uh, uh, many extramarital affairs and, and uh, his uh, lying and, and uh, seemingly made of Teflon that nothing, nothing sticks and he gets away with, uh, with everything. But getting away with something, uh, committing a crime and getting away with it, means that you have no character. Uh, a character strength means that there is an absolute standard that you own up to in your life. And that that's, that's how you are, that's how you live, because it's in your being. And if you violate that standard that is set on the books, uh, it bothers you. And uh, we live in a world today where consciences are being seared and nothing seems to bother people. Um, I especially noted that when I first came years back in, into, um, uh, into the Evansville area. There were very few people that ever said, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, I apologize. Um, didn't, didn't seem to bother them that they violated laws, uh, that they gave their word, that they breached their contract. Uh, but uh, it, was, it was always, I'm right and you're wrong and never, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, perhaps uh, it was that way back home uh, as well, but, uh, or maybe we said I'm sorry too much. I know uh, Max Hartley used to get on me because that's all it is, <laughs> would say is I'm sorry for this and I'm sorry for that. The reason I always want to keep a conscience that can be pricked for any violation, any infringement, um, uh, any offensive uh, uh, offenses toward uh, others. Uh, and because I learned a long time ago that those things are character strengths. And that's what we're going to talk about, having virtue or strength of character. Now, I'm not talking about being a character. I'm talking about having a character that owns up to ab the absolute standards of God's word as they are set in God's own nature. That's the word he uses right here. Arete means a character strength that mirrors God. You know, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, be ye followers of God as dear children. But the Greek word there is mimetes. We get our word mime from it. Uh, of course, there are some mimes that are just as soon not be around. But uh, a mime from it means to, to mimic, to act accordingly, uh, uh, to, to respond to in a mirror-like uh, fashion. And so... God has attributes that reflect his own nature. We always talk about, oh, we want to be God-like and Christ-like and so forth. So we have to learn how they are like and mimic them. But uh, in actuality, it's actually uh, becoming, having their attributes and character strengths becoming our own. All right, the second thing that he talks about here in this verse is the word praise. Now, immediately, given our uh, current environment with the uh, Pentecostals and the Charismatics taking over, you're, you're thinking, well, yeah, Pastor, um, you're talking about something that uh, uh, we can use to glorify and praise God. The fact of the matter is, I'm not. I'm talking about something that you accomplish or something that you become in your life, in your behavior, and that, inc that includes, of course, the inner man, the way you think, your attitudes, the way you approach something, uh, and so forth, that God can praise you for. That's what he's talking about. To so learn and study what a virtue is and make it such a part of your life that you are so Christ-like that the same reasons God the Father praises his Son are the very same reasons he praises you. And that's, that's this a word here. It's epinos. And it means qualities that are worthy of divine praise, which merit God's commendation. Now, uh, let's hold our place here and uh, turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, excuse me. Uh, chapter 4 and verse 5. First Corinthians chapter four and verse five. And it says there, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Now, what he's referring to are some of the issues of the inner man, the hidden man of the heart. 
some things that only that person can know about. And uh, we all have skeletons in the closet. We've all got secret sins. Uh, and sometimes um, uh, these things surface in, in other ways and the like, and another person will sit back and say, hmm, 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 and, and the, but they're not absolutely sure. Well, he's saying on those things, in those areas, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Why? Because he's going to bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Scary thought, isn't it? <laughs> uh, when uh, the Lord's going to reveal the hidden man of the heart uh, at the Bema seat, what you're really like on the inside. Uh, and it's uh, saying here we all have a dark side. We've all gone over. We're all Darth Vader's. We've gone over to the dark side of the force. And we'll make manifest the counsels of the heart. What were your real intentions for saying that? Did you have ulterior motives? Did you have your own agenda? Were you wanting others to think of you in, in this way, and yet you're not this way in the heart? Is that hypocrisy and so forth? And all of those things are going to be brought out. And uh, that is not only scary, but it's also motivational. Why do I say it's motivational? Because if you don't want another to, to know, keep your heart right. Think right, have the proper motivation, and uh, you'll get gold, silver, precious stone for it in the end. But here's uh, the verse we want to zero in on. And here's epinos. And then shall every man have praise of God. For your strengths, your inner strengths of character, uh, God is going to praise you for it. Now, we don't work for salvation, but we do work after salvation. We perform good works. Where's the first place we perform good works? You see, this is where religion gets it all bum puzzled. They always focus on the outer man, something outside of yourself, or in mere show and appearance. The first place you work on is on the inner man. And that's what Paul's talking about here. If you have your inner man right, the outer man's going to take care of itself because you're simply going to act according to your nature. You're going to be spiritual inside and it'll work its way out. Turn to the book of Ephesians, still holding your place. I've, I've, I found a good thing for Lee's bullseye, <laughs> holding my place in the Bible. All right, don't tell him I said that. My thoughts and motivations were certainly pure. <laughs> All right, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 24. Verse 23 says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's the focus of the Christian way of life. And so when we're talking about a virtue, we're talking about an inner strength of character. Something that is there when the storms of life test you when the pressures and strains of life come. Do you give up? Do you fail? Do you sin? And, and so forth. Or are you of such metal that this is a character strength? And when you are tested, you live according to that strength because it's part of your nature. That's how God uh, does it. He is above the sin because it's part of his nature. He, he can't uh, be tested in, in that. He can't be, be, be tempted. He won't allow himself. He just acts according to his own righteous nature. And so that's why Paul says, for us to put on the new man. The new man is the likeness of Jesus Christ as the image of God, as he represents the Father to us. We have a model. We have a pattern to go by. It's not just the scriptures, but it is Christ himself. He is the new man. It's uh, his values, his standards that we go by. And that's why it says, which after God, and the word after is kata, meaning after the norms and standards of God, is created in righteousness, that is proper thinking, true holiness, overall integrity. All right, one more place we want to go to. 2 Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. And we'll start with 
Verse number two. Now, even though this is a book for kingdom saints, for Jews, remember there are a lot of transdispensational truths. There are a lot of goals and objectives that God has given them as well as us. There are a lot of similarities. And so Peter says, grace and peace be multiplied to you, uh, 2 Peter 1, 2, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. We've got to know them. What is God's essence? What was the Lord's uh, uh, essence? What were his attributes and characteristics? Now, verse number three. According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Now, that, that's a, a call. That's what Paul is saying here. If, if there's any of these things that are characteristics of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and that can be added to our lives to be like him, think on these things. They will, number one, bring strength of character to you and reward in the end because it's God himself that's going to praise you for these things. And so he says, Wherefore are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having uh, escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The virtues that we are talking about are character strengths in God himself that become ours. So let's um, go back, uh, if you would, to Philippians chapter 4. And let's look at another definition here. It is really important uh, to note this. It says that the last four words are, think on these things. Now, immediately, you are uh, given the impression that it's something to be contemplated. That's what the word think means. Uh, so you're, you go through life and you see these things, you go through the Word of God, you look at Jesus Christ and what he did, and you, you uh, consider these things. But actually, the word itself means more than just to consider. Uh, you, would, you would think that Paul would have uh, used one of the mind words in, uh, in thinking, uh, neos and so forth, or nous. But no, he doesn't use that. He uses the word logizomai. Now, what is important about this particular word? This particular word means to transfer something, to transfer it from one place to another in three ways, either by relocation. Uh, you can pick up a, a, a cup of coffee and take it from the kitchen to the living room where you're watching your favorite show. You know what you have just done? Lokidzomide it. <laughs> or you can calculate it. Uh, anybody that, um, uh, that works with numbers does this and keeps the books. Uh, somebody uh, gives to the church, say, uh, a check for 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever. Okay? And... Um, our treasurer and his assistant take that check, and they logizomai it. They reckon it from this account to this account. And of course, by imputation, we've got uh, uh, lots of um, uh, verses of Scripture that tell us about uh, Abraham believed God, and it was logizomai It was imputed to him. It was reckoned to him for righteousness. In fact, again, holding your place here, let's go back to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. And in Luke 22, verse number 37, we have a use of this particular word that gives us a, a concept. Verse number 37, it says, 
For I say unto you that this was written, that, excuse me, that this that is written, too many thises and that's there. Did you ever get a sentence where it has two that's in a row that that might be true? <laughs> it's always, it's, it's correct, but it's hard. Uh, verse 7, yet might be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned, there's the word logizomai, among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. Now, what is, what is the point that he's making here? Well, Jesus Christ was in group A here, or point A. Point A is, he was not numbered originally among the transgressors. Uh, he was a human being, but it was, it was different for him because he didn't have a sin nature, and he didn't have uh, Adam's original sin uh, imputed to him. But what happened? He was logizomide. He went from one group to the other group. There was a transfer, and that's what logizomai is. It is a verb of transfer. And he was relocated from this unique group where, where there were only two men, Adam originally and Christ, who did not have sin natures at their origin. Of course, Adam acquired one. To Jesus Christ, assuming the punishment for the sins of the whole world. And therefore, he was taken from, from group A and point A and placed into group B and point B. He assumed, he identified with us. He was on the same page with us, in other words. It, he, it, God just said, okay, you were here, but now I'm, I'm going to have to put you over here if we're going to um, get this job done of man's salvation. All right, let's go to the book of Romans. The book of Romans. And chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verse 3. What saith the scripture? Now here's, here's the hard part. A lot of times Logizomai was, was not consistently translated. But it means the same thing. What saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was logizomai to him for righteousness. God made a transfer. God made an imputation. Abraham didn't have righteousness and God did have righteousness and he sent righteousness uh, Abraham's way. He transferred it to Abraham. Now to him that worketh the reward is not reckoned of grace but of debt. But to him that works not but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted logizomai for righteousness. That's what happened to you. You have been logizomai and you didn't even know it. And that just simply means when you believed, God made a transfer of his righteousness to your behalf. It was placed, uh, uh, you were in the indebtedness page, and you are now placed on free from debt. And not only that, he imputed something, that was his own substance to you, which is righteous. His righteous thinking in your heart, and that's what makes you saved. You are righteous because you thought like God. Let's uh, move on here to verse number 21. We was fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform and therefore it was imputed. You see, reckoned, counted, imputed. They didn't translate it consistently, but it's all the same Greek word. To him for righteousness, but not for his sake alone uh, that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe. So that's what logizomai is. It is a transfer. Now, while we're here in Romans, let's just go to um, uh, chapter 8. And we'll start with verse no number 28. Now, as we're doing this in Romans 8.28... The whole purpose for this series as we're laying the groundwork and the foundation for virtues. See, we're, we're going to be thinking in just a little bit about kindness. And um, all of us are going to say, well, I'm kind. Uh, I don't kick my dog. I feed my bird. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind. I don't chew the newspaper boy out. At least when I do, it's not bad. 
I don't use any bad language, or I'm, I'm very kind, sweet and gentle and gracious. Well, wait till you find, before you think of yourself as kind, wait till you find out what kindness is. And for the most part, humanly speaking, we are all kind. But the problem is that we have used a human standard to judge our own kindness by. If I were to ask for a raise of hands and say, how many of you know un unsaved people that you think are kind? You know what? You would raise your hand. I would too. I, I know a lot of unsaved people. Um, that is, and down through the years of my ministry, there, there have been times that I'd rather had fellowship with them than with some saved folks that were a, a pain in the uh, proverbial part of the anatomy that I better not discuss. But, uh, you know, they, they were pains. We'll, we'll call it the neck. I had a lot of pains in my neck at a time. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You couldn't get through. They were unreasonable, implacable. And you, you would, it didn't matter how much you talked, it wasn't going to change their behavior or their thinking. They were totally in the wrong. You quote a verse of scripture to them. You quote a Bible doctrine. Didn't make a bit of difference. They're going to do what they're going to do uh, and, and the like. However, there is a kindness that we need to have in our lives that has nothing to do with humanity except as it's seen in Christ. And we'll look at what that kind of kindness is. Believe you me, it is much broader than the, uh, than the kindness that the world has. And by the way, the kind of kindness I'm talking about is a fruit of the Spirit, as we'll see at the end of this study. It's a fruit of the Spirit that cannot be produced by the old sin nature. So though unbelievers are kind, they're kind only uh, in a way. They're, they're sort of kind, but they still don't measure up to the kind of kindness that God has. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. What is his purpose? For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. Jesus Christ had certain behavioral characteristics when he lived among men. Jesus Christ had certain behavioral characteristics that the Father praised him for when he was seated at his right hand when creation um, uh, uh, first began. You have hated iniquity and you have loved righteousness. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Why was Christ praised? Because he had character. That's why. He wasn't like Lucifer and those who had no character. There was his, the, Lucifer's Lord there on the throne. But instead of, of praising Christ for who he was, let all the angels of God worship him, Lucifer begins to be unkind to him. It's going to be a corporate takeover here. He's going to trample and use Jesus Christ. He's going to get that throne. Do you know what? That's not very nice, is it? That's not very kind. And yet Jesus Christ could have tried that with the throne of the Father, but he did not. Why didn't he do it? Because he was kind. He had character. Uh, he wasn't about to live differently from the established laws on the book. And uh, that's, what the, that's what made him uh, absolutely unique and wonderful. But that is what, what God is trying to do. He is going to conform us to the image of his son. Now, if you'll turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you'll note something here fantastic. I've got good news and bad news for you. <laughs> the good news is there is a part of this image that we're going to have that is given to us automatically. Praise God, hallelujah, praise the Lord, jump up and down and shout. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 45. Here's the automatic part. When you trusted Christ as Savior, you're going to be in the image of his resurrection, whether you want to or not. And that's fantastic. It's a give-in. It's a, it's a shoe-in. You've got it already. You don't have to think about it. don't have to worry about it. don't have to work for it. When the time comes for your resurrection transformation, you've got it. Verse number 45. So it's written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last man Adam was made a quickening spirit. 
Howbeit that was not first which was spiritual, but that which is natural. Afterwards, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man, the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, uh, so also um, such as they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And here it is. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So there's a part of this image that God has predestined us to that he gives us at the moment we trust Jesus Christ as Savior. Now that's the easy part. Once you trusted Christ, hey, you have this to, to look forward to. Even so, come Lord Jesus, haste the day, and, and so forth. But now let's go to the book of, of Colossians. The book of Colossians. Chapter 3. And verse number 10. The difficult part is the logizomai transfer. Logizomai means not just to think about it, but make it become part of your life. To so understand it that it becomes not second nature to you, but first nature. It's, it's uh, how you are because you're filled with the Spirit and you want to live your life in the likeness of Jesus Christ. So, uh, it says here, verse uh, number 10, and have put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse number 12, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercies, and here is our word, kindness. That's the doctrine we're going to talk about in just a little bit. Humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. So, uh, verse number 10. Again, we're exhorted to put on the new man. You know what it means? It means, and here's our doctrine of endowment. Only Israel had an outer endowment. We have an inner endowment. To put it on means to be clothed upon. We're filled with the Spirit so that the Holy Spirit from the inside out controls our sin nature. Now we have a means to glorify God in the flesh. Now, the second thing we need to do is begin to live according to the Word. What is that? Understanding what kindness is. That's why he says, the new man is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Therefore, put on, as the elect of God, kindness. Uh, it is something to be assumed, something that is to uh, be, um, be done as you understand uh, uh, the Christian way of life. Okay, before we, before we move from this one, we're just a, a, about out of time. We started a few minutes early. Let's go back to the book of Ephesians. All right. Pick up a couple things here and then go back to Philippians and we're done. Ephesians chapter 2. Now, verses 8 and 9 are familiar verses to anybody who is a grace believer. We harp on them, we stand for them, we proclaim them. But a verse that's often neglected in conjunction with this is verse 10. It says, by grace you're saved through faith, not of yourselves, the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But then Paul says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. And see, that's what, that's what Paul is addressing. The creation of the likeness of Christ in our hearts. 
are learning what he was like, so much so that we make the logizomai transfer. And that uh, simply means that we go from, from, um, from one point then to the next point. We learn what Christ is like. Point A, he was kind. And this is the Greek word Christotes, and we will learn that, what that means in uh, just a bit in the next hour. But once we learn what it is, we have to think on it. That means contemplate it. What does that mean for me personally to be like Jesus Christ? This is how he was. And you make the logizomai transfer so that what he was by way of characteristic image, his virtues are transferred to you. So that like as Christ was kind in given instances as part of his nature, you too, to be like Christ, have have made the transfer, have assumed his image and his likeness. And by the way, what was it that man lost in the garden? The image of God that was comprised of spirit and truth. You know what one of the truths was? That part of God's essence and nature is that he is kind. And it is a kindness that is beyond compare with anything any human being uh, has. So, uh, let's uh, finish verse number 10 and we're through. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. It's part of the Christian walk to think on these things. Now let's go back to Philippians and close this out. Philippians 4 verse 8 Where have we come from? We started off by saying a common objective for all believers is to assume the image of God as found in the likeness of Christ. We are predestined to be conformed to his image. The first part we have is resurrection. The second part, the bad news, we must work for it. How do we work for it? We must reckon it to be so. This is a uh, present tense verb that uh, we have here, logizomai, where it says think. Present tense verb. Now, what does that mean? A customary present tense means that it's something that Paul customarily, normally thought of should happen in the Christian way of life. It also is in the middle voice, which means this, that as you are thinking, there is reflex of action. As you are thinking, the action of the verb comes back to you. It's working on you. It's something that you're going to benefit by. You're thinking about the virtues of Christ, and the middle voice says, you're becoming like you're thinking. Book of Proverbs, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You're assuming the nature of God. The middle voice, reflex of action. But here's one more thing, and this will grab you. It's in the imperative mood of command. We are commanded as grace age believers to assume or acquire virtue. And not just any kind of virtue according to a worldly standard, but the kind of virtue that can be praised, not by men, but by God himself at the Bema Seat. So, uh, as we close this first hour, I exhort you to think on these things.